the merit of centralization. To the merit of centralization of unitary government and encouragement of dictatorship, it has a tendency for the central government to become dictatorial. Then the central government is overboarding because it has a lot of functions to perform and because it is not decentralized in some of its functions, there is a tendency of it being overboarding with a lot of job. Then the preventions of local autonomy and uh, government is kept far away from the people. That is another problem. One, those regional bodies will not have a local autonomy and the government is kept far away from the people. It also kills local initiative. That's another problem. Because if there's a decentralization, people will develop local initiative. People will mobilize resources. People will develop, they have their own development template templates sorry they have their own development frame and they know exactly what is good for them within that community but a situation we are in there is no decentralization what happens is keys local initiative it does not suit large territories it cannot be operated in a federal state that of course it leads to the domination of minority groups it causes dissatisfaction and it's therefore it is prone to political instability it does also not encourage wider representation and does not create more employment opportunities and they are also apply for favor, favor apply favorably to centralization at its demerit in as much as uh, powers are being concentrated on single authority and there is no decentralization there is not much creature, uh, creation of offices and how can citizens participate in the governance system so therefore it also it is not creating more room for employment opportunities so these are some of the arguments against the concept of uh, centralizations that yes with all of those beautiful things we also have problem with decentralizations we also want to look at decentralizations we've just concluded with centralizations we want to look at decentralization mind you don't forget to hit on the subscribe button you also add your comments so that we know your reactions as well so the term decentralization refers to the system of government administrations in which powers are not concentrated in a single central authority but shared among components regional and local units or states distinct from the central government powers allocated to different authorities are clearly specified in the written constitution there are areas of authority short as foreign affairs defense currency immigration immigration etc these are reserved exclusively for the central authority and are known in the constitution as the exclusive list decentralization exists in a federal structure the federal states short as usa nigeria the federal republic of germany etc examples of decentralizations of government administration so in other words the decentralization is the opposite to centralization here what happens the powers are not concentrated in a single central authority in fact there are provisions that the sharing of powers among component regional and local units and not only at the wish of the state but they are being stipulated they are being specified in the written constitutions and also their power that is exclu exclusively meant for the central government so that is the decentralization process we look at the centralization we discuss about what happens the powers is being concentrated on a single authority and, and there are no constitutional provisions for the sharing of powers it is at the discretion of the central government to delegate some of these powers but when you look at a decentralization process that is opposite here the powers are shared among component region or local units and they are be specified in the written constitutions that is the dichotomy between centralization and decentralization so let's look at the forms of decentralization in other words we talk about the types of decentralizations so now looking at the types of decentralizations as we said or sometimes 
some people refer to as a form of decentralization. One, we have devolution. This is a system of administration in which semi-autonomous regional governments are created with defined powers and functions, but subordinate to the central government. This type of administration applies with unitary government in which the country may be split into units for administrative convenience for instance south africa uh, and, uh, and northern ireland examples of revolutionary government then of course we have what we call deconcentration this refers to a system of administration in which powers are shared in short a way that the component states are not directly subordinate to the central authority. So all of this is talking about centralizations. But the problem with them is that one, like for instance, when you look at um, the evolution, what happens? They, they have powers. The powers are created within what a defined powers and functions, but they are subordinate to the central government. But in a deconcentration as a type of decentralization, what happens here? The component states are not directly subordinate to the central authority. So that's the difference between devolution and deconcentration. So we have two forms of decentralization or two types of decentralization. One, we have the devolution and also deconcentration. Please don't forget to hit on the subscribe button. So let's look at reasons for adopting for adoption of decentralization. The factors that include why people adopt decentralization, one is for fear of domination, so that one particular tribe or ethnic group would not dominate the political landscape. Then of course, protection of the interests of the minority group. And also, it is all, can also be adopted because of the size of the country. As we said earlier on, you cannot practice centralization in a federal state because those countries that are practicing uh, 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 federal federalism these are countries with a large huge territory and also with a large population so it's based on the size of the country and also for rapid and even development also to bring government nearer to the people why that is why some countries also adopt what we call decentralization remember one of the arguments we proffer with regards to centralization is that it is not given the opportunity to bring the government very close to the people but what happens in decentralization why people adopt is that one it brings the government nearer to the people it expands local market for easy and effective governance these are some of the reasons why the concept of decentralization is being adopted by some countries so look at the merit of decentralization one there are political unity faster development encouragement of healthy competitions it brings governments nearer to the people as we said earlier there's a prevention of the emergency of a detector it allays fears of domination it guarantees wider consultations for the fact remains that the powers are not centered around a single central authorities but a constitution made provisions for the sharing of these powers so therefore it made provisions it or it guarantee wider consultations under the concept of uh, uh centralizations so also look at the demerits have a look at the advantages what are some of the disadvantages of decentralized system of government they include one interstate resistance it also brings sectional consciousness or necessary duplication of organs of government so sometimes what happens because of decentralization some in fact the regional bodies or component body will pay more loyalty to their regional bodies than even the central government of course there is a necessary duplication of organs of government because the same functions that will be performing at the central government or central level these are the same functions that will also be performed at this regional local unit or component or regional bodies so that is it is expensive to operate 
and there is difficulties in taking quick decisions because you have to look at all of these components regional bodies in the case of centralization decision can be easily made they it's create weak central problem of coordination disparity in the level